Okay, so welcome back. We're in our second class. Today is March 17th, 2020. Today is in Patrick's Days. is the patron saint of Ireland. And um, on today is our second class. And we're going to be doing today year six sheet, homework sheet number three. Okay, before we start with that, I'm going to show you how to navigate uh, the activities in the channel. Okay, so we're going to go on the internet. We're going to log on or just visit uh, um, the channel. So you will type, if you have not subscribed, you would just uh, type uh, Agus class in the search bar. And, uh, and then when you get to the channel, uh, I think it will help you if you go to the watch list or listas de reproducción if you have it in Spanish. And there you will see the classes. Uh, we continue with our classes. It's the watch list that has um, the classes. And then you have the readings in read aloud, read along. Okay. Um, and then your videos will be posted on the watch list garden and composting. Our class is changing. That was another project that we did some time ago. And then you have 2018, 2019, if you want to watch some of the videos that we recorded uh, with the students of year six last year, okay? So when you go, for example, to your classes, you will see all the classes there. And if we go to yesterday's class, you need to open the description. Let's see if it loads. Description of this video so that you can download so it. So I'm gonna pause it. And then I, when I go down, I go to the description and let's see. Right, down in the description there is a link. Let's see if I can show you. Down in the description there is a link with the, with the actual paper that you can um, download and print, or if you can't print because you don't have access to a printer, you can um, you can just open it on your browser, on your internet uh, navigator, if you want to call it, it's a web browser, and uh, and you can copy it in your notebook, copy the activities, and do it then there. Okay. So let's get started with homework worksheet week three and there we have the words and I'm gonna write the words and I'm gonna explain like yesterday what they mean some uh, tricks if there's any trick uh, on how to say those words and then we'll go into verbs change it and questions okay make sure that you pause the video if you have to copy something if you can't uh, print the paper or you don't have it now this class some of you uh, it may be a repetition of the class because we may have had it last week. You may have had it as a whole class um, or as a small group because other students were doing uh, work in the tablets or reading or uh, editing videos. So if we did this class with your group last week, this will be a review and uh, you can check your homework because uh, I told you it was homework for like a week or two. So if we have time next week, we will have a look at it. So now we can uh, check that everything is good. Okay, so let's get started with the words. Um, all right, so the first column, the words are main. I'm gonna try to write bigger today, just in case the light and the sound, I don't know how the light and the sound is gonna be because I am outside today. It just feels better to be outside if you can. So yesterday was a very uh, rainy day and today it starts raining and then stops. So we'll see. All right. So these are the first four words. Column number one, main, kept, beautiful, and finished. As you can see, finished ends on ED. Okay, so that's going to be the past of finish. Main is the most important, like the main character. My main problem right now is that I am getting bored, okay? Uh, kept is the past of keep. 
Now, keep is a word that has a lot of meanings, but um, basically, um, keeping something is to uh, to put all your. For example, you can say, "I keep all my uh, pencils and my colors and my crayons and my pens in my pencil case." So you keep them there. You have them there. Is a place where you uh, keep them. Okay. All right. So let's go with column number two. Wide. Let me let me put in right here. Wide. Interest. Interest. Winter. One of the four seasons. You know we have spring, summer, autumn or fall, and winter. Okay. And then discovered. Discovered. Again. I see that's a verb in the past, okay? Uh, now, wide would be the opposite, the antonym of narrow, okay? If we're talking about, sorry, that would be an O, narrow. If we talk about a street, the street can be wide or it can be very narrow, okay? If it can accommodate a lot of traffic, a lot of people, and it's big, it's going to be wide, okay? And narrow is the opposite, okay? Okay, let's go to line number three. Let me erase this one. Again, feel free, whenever you need to stop the video, do copy the words if you don't have them on paper and start work, okay? Now, the next ones are written, brother, and all these words, again, brother would be how you would pronounce it in British English. Brother would be how you pronounce it in American English. Past, again, I'm gonna try to do a short A, not past, and say past, okay? And then wild. Now, don't confuse wild with wide, okay? They're not the same, they sound similar, but they're not the same, okay? Wild is savage something or someone that is out of control or is not domesticated like animals are wild animals they live in nature and they're just wild that's their nature okay and written now comes from the verb to write the passive write which is an irregular verb would be wrote and the past participle will be written which is this one okay now it can also be uh, an adjective so you can say the written word, okay? So something that is written is on paper and you have written it with a pen or it can also be written on the computer, typed, we would say then. All right, we go to column number four. Column number four is length, length, race, sign, and record. All right, now length is the quality of being long. So if something is long, okay, it has um, a high length, it has good length or big length or, I don't know how you could say it, but length is the quality, it's longitud, okay? So it would, length is a noun, all right? As opposed to long, which is an adjective, all right? Uh, race, okay, two meanings. It is a running competition, okay? Yesterday I, run, I ran a race and I lost or I won. Uh, but it's also, um, when people are from different uh, countries and traditions and and they have a genetic background, the same genetic background, so we we say that we share they the people in that community share a race. Okay, there's different races in the world, and uh, if we talked about uh, animals we will call that breeds okay different breeds of dogs okay like a labrador like a chihuahua so race is a word for people okay 
sign, not to be confused with sin, okay? Which is singing. And uh, a sign is something that gives you information uh, in a picture. For example, this would be a sign. It's called a stop sign. Signing, it's also when you have a document and they tell you sign here. And then you shine, you sign, okay? And finally, record. Record uh, is the best time in something or the best of a group, okay? That's the record, for example. I have uh, the record uh, of the most free throws in my basketball uh, team in one game, okay? I hold the record. I have the record. Also, record, and then that will change the accent of the word. Record, okay? It's a verb, okay? And it means to... It can be to take note of something. For example, the referee uh, records the, the statistics in a basketball game or in a, in a football game or a soccer match. Um, but it's also when you are making a video with your tablet, your phone, your camera, you record a video, okay? So let's move on to the last, the last column will be the last column with reason reason present present as opposed to past edge all right and store all right so reason is um is a verb you have to reason uh the problem you have to think about it you have to use reason to solve the problem, okay? You have to use logic, your reason, okay? Your reasoning is on also all your mental processes, thinking. Um, so that's the verb. And then to have a reason, uh, what is the reason you didn't come to school yesterday? Oh, the reason why I didn't come to school yesterday is because I was sick, for example. Or <laughs> really, uh, it's because there was no school, all right? Uh, well, I said present is the opposite of past. Uh, edge. Now, edge, when you have, you know, anything, uh, the, the place where the planes get together, that's called the edge, okay? Um, it can be the edge of a table. It can be the edge of a cliff, like like when uh, when you're walking and then there is a big fall and then there is a sea or something, that's a cliff. So that will be the edge of the cliff. Um, and then finally, store. And again, a word that has two meanings. It can be a verb and it can be a, um, a noun. The noun, the store is a synonym for shop where you go uh, to buy things, a supermarket or... Uh, technology store or clothes store, department store. And uh, to store as a verb is to uh, to keep, we go back to the first word, to keep things. Uh, for example, we store food in the winter or for the ants store food in the winter underground. Well, actually they store it in the summer. They collect all their little uh, seeds and and all the food that they need to keep for the winter and uh, and they store it underground they keep it underground in storage rooms okay um, all right so those are the words this week make sure you make your uh, your look say uh, cover write and check okay when you know all of them make sure that you write them in your um, mini word wall at the end of your uh, notebook and as the instructions say on the paper you have to uh, write sentences using 15 of these words okay uh, like I said you don't have to write 15 sentences 
one per word. You have to use as many as you can in some sentences. Sometimes you may use four or five in one, and other times some of the words are more difficult to use with others. So uh, you, you will be able to use just one in a sentence, and that's okay, okay? The thing is that you practice them, you understand them, and I get, go back to the video. You can go back to the video in case... Uh, and another thing I want to say, um, if you uh, click on, when you're watching the video, if you click on uh, sub subtitles, uh, you will see that you can actually follow uh, as I am speaking and um, YouTube, it's a great thing, it's going to write what I say. Um, and yesterday I, I listened for a couple of minutes and it does a really good job of understanding what you say and writing it at the bottom of the screen so that might help you to try it okay all right moving on we go now to activity number two verse first verbs okay read the instructions and we're going to make our little grid all right so we're ready for uh activity number two verse first first here we have our grid our table with a positive negative and the question the present the past and the future okay yesterday we only did the present and the past because that was year six today we're doing years uh that was year five sorry today's year six so we're including the future okay uh, the two words we're going to use for that is they and drive okay drive is to drive a car a truck um and uh, and it's an irregular past, okay? So if we want the past for drive, it would be drove, okay? So that will be changing the I into an O, drove, okay? All right, so in the present, again, we have two options, do and does. We, if you remember yesterday, we said that does is, and the S of third person in the positive, this one, which is the one that would have the S if it was the third person, okay? The, the third person singular. Now, we have the third person today, they, but it's not singular, it's plural. So the S rule does not apply, nothing to do with the does. We will do the question and the negative with the do. So let's get started. Let's see how the positive in the present would be. They drive, they drive their, their trucks, uh, to take supplies to the supermarkets. They drive. All right. The negative, just like we saw yesterday, right here between the subject and the verb, we would write don't, okay? They don't drive. They don't drive. And again, for the question, we need to use the do that we start the sentence with. We start the sentence with do they drive. Do they drive? And that will be the present, okay? Positive, negative, and question. Let's have a look at the past. We said drive as an irregular verb, so we need to use the special form of the, of, uh, the past is drove. So the positive in the past will be they drove they drove to the beach to go on vacation uh, again between the subject and the verb we will use the negative with the auxiliary verb the do in the past is did so it becomes they did not or they didn't I changed the O for an apostrophe they didn't drive Again, remember, I don't say they didn't drove. That will be a duplication of the past, okay? I have the past already in did, don't need it in drive. So that's why I don't use drove. I use I didn't drive, okay? And the same with the question. The do they drive in the past changes the do into the past form. Did they drive? All right, very simple. Um, all right, let's have a look at the future. Now, the auxiliary verb that we use in the future is the word will, okay? W-I-L-L, -L, will, okay? Uh, like we mentioned today, not to confuse with well, 
all right? Um, so the future is going to be they drive in between the subject and the verb. I will put they will drive, okay? The negative is going to be with will not or won't, okay? If you were paying attention yesterday, I copied the word wrong. So the word on the paper is said went, and I explained a little bit about want. So they will not drive if I use the contracted form, the contraction, they won't drive, okay? And um, finally, the question in the future, will they drive? Will they drive? That's an interesting question. Will they drive? Well, depends. If they have to go to work, they will drive their car. If uh, they don't have to go to work, they should stay home, okay? So they will not drive, all right? Um, all right, so let's move on to activity number three. Okay, so the sentence today is, for activity number three, is he plays video games occasionally. He plays video games occasionally, all right? So... I look here and I see that it's a third person singular, okay? He, she, or it. And I see that the sentence is in the present because I see the S of the third person. So it can only be the present, okay? So he plays video games right now or regularly, occasionally, all right? So that's why we have the present. So we have to turn the sentences into the negative and the interrogative forms. Let's start with the negative. Now, we know it's a present, okay, so we come here, but our example we said is a third person plural here, and in our sentence is the third person singular, so I'm going to go with the third person form of the verb to do, does, okay, and so the negative I will add here, he doesn't, and now remember, now I have a duplication of the S. So, this S has to go. He doesn't play video games occasionally, all right? That will be the correct form to do the negative of this sentence. Now, what happens with the question? The question, the same thing. We use the does and we put it in the front. Does he, now this, this disappears, does he play? Again, we don't want to repeat the S. We don't want to say that he plays, okay? That's he play video games occasionally, all right? You can practice with other sentences, okay? The same idea. All right, let's move on to activity number four, all right? Take some time to pause the video and copy them. Copy the questions and, um, and let's answer the, um, let's use the all, as much as the question as we can, as much from the question as we can to formulate our answer. So the first, um, the first sentence says, why did they call their friends? And we have to say in our sentence, they had lost their homework, okay? So I know it's a, que it's a question in the past because I see the word did, why did they call? Um, so my answer to what did they call their friends, what, why did they call their friends, is going to be they called, and here I'm going to have an ed at the end of the verb, they called their friends because they had lost their homework. Okay, that would be um, the correct answer. They called, in the past, they called their friends because they had lost their homework. A B sentence says, who is going to come to your pajama party? Some of my friends. Think about the answer. Who is going to come to your pajama party? Now, I'm going to start the sentence, the answer, with the part in brackets. So the answer, the correct answer would be, some of my friends are going to come 
to my pyjama party, okay? Sentence C. Where do you normally have lunch? In school. You could say in school, at school. Um, I normally have lunch in school. I normally have lunch at school. So those are the activities for today. Um, remember, uh, do some reading. Go to the channel and on the watch list, uh, read aloud, read along. Um, you already have three books. Uh, make sure that you put on some headphones for best experience. Um, probably, especially Pet Squad is not good for to to watch it on a phone, on a cell phone or a mobile phone. So you're better off, you're better if you watch it on a tablet or a computer. Because um, especially Pet Squad was not very good quality with when uh, I scanned the book. Um, and and uh, enjoy the, those books, they're, they're fun. Um, before we finish today, uh, tomorrow we will have the year for class, but before we finish today, uh, remember on Friday, our last day of regular classes, uh, we filled up the composting bin. Uh, we did a lot of work, we weeded out the garden, and uh, after that, I went uh, to um, La Escuela Municipal de Jardinería because they donated uh, some plants to us, both for our class, and so we have some interior plants um, and and for the garden, okay? And I brought a lot of those plants home because I anticipated that maybe um, I would have to take care of them for some time. So I brought them home and I brought some uh, visitors with the plants, okay? This morning I found, uh, I'm gonna show you, I found, uh, they're hiding now, but I saw like seven or eight this morning. They're, uh, these little guys, these little guys, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, they're worms. Uh, you see, there's, uh, and there's some of them that are really, really long, like 11 or 12 centimeter long. And, um, and I said, well, where are they coming from? So I just uh, found out. They come in from the plants that they donated to us. So, uh, as you can see, I don't know if you can see them down there. Yeah, there's one little fella over there. Uh, let's say like that. There's worms. So, uh, unfortunately, I couldn't... Uh, there's some little ones too. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't... Uh, bring home the worms that we are going to be uh, using for our vermicompost. So I don't know what's going to happen with those worms, but we're going to start a project here at home. It's going to keep us uh, entertained and I will keep you posted what happens with the worms at home. And if, um, I don't know if they're composting worms. Uh, I don't know if they're red wigglers or not, or they may be just earth earthworms and uh, regular earthworms that they don't do uh, composting of food scraps. So uh, keep strong uh, and I will see you tomorrow for the year for class. Okay, goodbye and have a good day.